Welcome to Big Basket Now presents the RCB podcast. Not too long ago, you could just count the number of great fielders in cricket with your fingers. They were far and few. Fast forward to 2024 and you can see every professional team having special focus on athleticism in the field. Superhuman catches aren't anomalies anymore. Batters are pushing for that extra run more than before. Despite the increasing workload, fast bowlers are clocking 140 plus consistently. The biggest catalyst behind this evolution is the fitness and energy levels of modern cricketers. And nutrition and food take centre stage in that journey. This episode is all about understanding what top cricketers in the world eat. How much of that is meat? Is there anything on their plate that's sweet? And how often do they cheat? Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of the IPL. This is Eat, Pray, Love, Nutrition and Food. Virat, over the years, you've made some significant changes to your diet. What role has that played in your transformation? You know, diet for me is everything today. Right. Um, consumption of food is is something that I did not understand how much value it holds. But then when I started doing it, I understood the effects of it, the way I was able to recover my energy levels. And then for me, it became more like a um, daily routine kind of a, a thing where it wasn't like, okay, I'm going to eat two healthy meals a day and the third one could be off. For me, it was like precise. What what was I eating through the day? Uh, how does it help me maintain my weight, my muscle mass, all those kind of things. So it then becomes more like a study rather than just eating to yeah. for, you know, uh, fill your stomach. That's probably been the most important factor in the transformation that I had apart from all the physical work because I was still a, a guy who would do a lot of things, you know, work out, fielding practice, batting practice. But when I realized the importance of eating right and and sleeping well and resting, that was the game changer. Virat has set the bar pretty much on the top of Everest when it comes to dietary changes over the years. And at RCB, there's one man who can be called the principal of that fitness and nutrition school. It's not an easy task to keep a squad of more than 20 top athletes in the cricketing world at their absolute best over a period of two months. But he surely knows a thing or two about that. So, you know, there are so many players and the way in which sport and nutrition has evolved, do they all come in with uh, different dietary requirements? Do they share them with you or do you assess them? And just a follow-up question to that, what is the assessment like? It is a mixture of everything. Some okay. of them take a personalized meal plan. Some of them say, this is what I have. Can you tinker it for me a little? And some of them, they already have an existing plan and they are happy to follow it. But uh, I always mention that uh, it is not any rocket science. It is just common sense. You're playing so much and uh, you need to consume the right amount of macro and micronutrients. And I think these players are very clever, Mm. very smart nowadays. And they know that nutrition plays a major role in their performance. And it is not a secret anymore. And everybody, when if you tell them that this is going to help you, they will stand upside down. In you, have you ever found yourself at a point where you have to ensure who's consuming what and how much? Not really, but when they come for an assessment or something, they're very, very candid about what they do. And uh, they're all adults. We can only give them a direction or a guideline. But also they're human and it's okay to like food. I, guess. And, uh, I, I always mention this. You can never follow a diet all through your life. Hmm. I mean, uh, diets and meal plans are there as a sort of a GPS navigation route. Hmm. Hmm. It is there to take you to the destination, but here and there, there has to be a pit stop for you to indulge. So... Every person now has their own dietary requirement. Is it measured to the calorie of the muscle that they're eating or is it okay? If somebody is saying that, maybe they have done it sporadically here and there, but it's impossible to do that. Bas ye bolna hai. Ye hi tumhara hai. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. <laughs> now delivering in 10 minutes. And 
And that brings us to the million dollar question. What is the go-to food for our top fast bowlers? Arguably the fittest athletes on a cricket ground. ज़्यादा कंफ्यूज होता हूँ ऑर्डर करने में तो मैं प्रेफर करता हूँ कि एक सिंपल सा खाना बस जितना बटर चिकन जीरा राइस वो ऑर्डर कर दिए और एक वाटर मिलन जूस तो वो मेरे लिए बहुत ही अच्छा रहता है क्योंकि ज़्यादा सोचना आप क्या ऑर्डर करूँ क्या नहीं इससे अच्छा बेटर है कि एक सिंपल खाना और मस्त पेट भर के खा सकते हैं But IPL mostly coincides with the holy month of Ramzan and Siraj observes his fast during that period. maintaining one's energy levels during that period while bowling at an express pace every day on the field doesn't get easier so how siraj manages to do that is truly a miracle kyunki jab main fasting karta hu to obviously main thoda kam hi khata hu kyunki jab subah 5 6:30 ko hum log ke fasting start hoti hai to wahan par khana kha ke phir shaam mein 7 baje phir fasting khatam hoti hai to dieting thodi to change hoti hai wo पता नहीं वो ऊपर से मेरे कल ये होता है वो एनर्जी हमेशा कैसा रहती है जब ऑब्वियसली खाना नहीं खाने बाद एनर्जी लो होती है बट ऐसा नहीं कभी ऐसा फील नहीं हुआ कि जब आप फास्टिंग रखें फिर उसके बाद आपकी एनर्जी लो मेरे को अभी तक कभी ऐसा फील नहीं हुआ हमेशा एनर्जी मेरी हाई रहती है डू यू समटाइम्स लुक एट अ प्लेयर्स प्लेट एंड wonder like how is this guy going to do this have you ever looked at a player's I, plate I, and actually said hey man listen you need to add more of this in it has that ever happened i used to feel a lot of that before 2016 post 2016 i think the players are very very conscious about what they do yeah and uh, once in a while when they indulge we all know that we are indulging hmm. and uh, for me this ipl is only 6 weeks that i just happily consume food whatever i like and I just uh, make sure that i keep others fit and uh, what i've noticed over a period of time is almost everyone they are mindful of what they put in their mouth and uh, yes there was a time as about 7 8 years back when and literally i told them boss this is not the way you conduct yourself as an athlete you need to really uh, have a different meal because plan. you've been a runner and i know how much you follow like not just cricket but other sport around the year was it something that was so sort of undiscovered as an idea to them when you saw them many years ago no, i think uh, the whole diet thing started somewhere about 25 years back i would say so it's you know, been evolving since been then it's evolving and uh, they went on overboard no or different i mean they label it with different yeah. names and yeah everyone uh, tries to uh, sort of promote their ideology about nutrition what to eat and uh, all and sundry become a snake oil salesman you know? Ah, now that's the my next question then. So when you see a snake oil salesman, how do you chip in and tell a guy, okay, listen, yeah, like ignore what he said, do what's right for you? Because very, very, very simple, uh, Danish. Eat whole foods. Yeah. Make sure that you consume the optimum amount of protein and the good fats. I think everyone knows this nowadays, and uh, eat sensibly. And yeah. if you're indulging, do it with awareness. Yeah. And I, I don't think there's any rocket science to it. They go overboard on it. I think even a rookie who's in this team will have a fair idea about nutrition now, because he's practicing it. He's not just a theoretician, right? And he's actually translating that into performance. And Suyash's so story of how he changed his belief system overnight speaks volumes of the commitment youngsters make to their cricket. So the story behind is I was a vegetarian before, and uh, then the trainer came to me and said, "You have to eat. You have to be a." non vegetarian you need to eat non vegetarian so that's how i ended up eating a non vegetarian and nowadays i'm i have become a non vegetarian I mean, i'm eating chicken fish and i'm loving i'm loving uh, this all this fish chicken and when when teams and players visit from one city to the other Like I said it's human you want to try food you want to try the cuisine because I feel like food somewhere is so connect it is right it's just the great like you said you went to chickpea to eat something right uh it's it's a very innocent question but do you sometimes kind of scout the place do you know what the what the great food is but dangerous food and you tell the team like guys you know you're going here there's chart available it's unbelievable but go easy on it 
do you ever have conversations like that not anymore right no i think it's other way around i can tell them please have oh really please do have once in a while and uh, even in my meal planning when i come to hyderabad i will check what is the best uh, sort of uh, cuisine in hyderabad and i'll tell the swami oh, please add this in the cuisine so if i go to jaipur i had some jaipuri dish when i go to punjab i had some punjabi so now this is very interesting right that means you clearly love food I I know that the boys like I'm not a foodie I'm no? not a big foodie so how do you do your research I about mean, I'm a person who can have curd rice with raita that is bas <laughs> right <laughs> right but I know the boys like different types of food and they like exploring and uh, I will never stop them from exploring yeah uh, mix which curry can taste differently in jaipur taste differently in 100% like, have the hyderabad cuisine here and have the jaipuri cuisine there the team has players coming from different parts of the world with the liking of different cuisine It's the management's responsibility to make sure there is a good balance of nutritional value and variety in the food that is offered to the team to keep them energetic and satisfied at the same time. We have a strict meal plan. That is one. Yeah. Okay. The only thing is the only difference between us and the other teams would be that we don't penalize the players for their fit fitness, right? It has to be a balance of uh you know fitness and well-being. Yeah. Right. So if you see your menu, it is never harsh. It's never uh, very extreme. Yeah. Right. It's got a balance of everything. Yeah. It's yeah. got a balance. So yeah. basically, it's not like there's just salad and yeah. nothing else. But how does that meal plan come together? A player might love his biryani, but does that add to his nutrition value? Who takes a call? It's interesting, right? So how do you do your research on places that we visit? For example, we're coming to Hyderabad now. At Hyderabad, the country around knows you're here. Biryani is the thing to go to. Now, I don't know if biryani is good or bad. I would say if you're playing a tough match, 90 hours especially this match, the best meal for that night is biryani. Really? You have fat carbohydrates and meal, and your soul is parched that day. 90 hours in the hot yeah, sun. Yeah. You can definitely have a biryani that day. <laughs> okay, so. So here's the thing, right? So how do you get down to different places? Yeah, I started putting these meal plans from 2013-14. Wow. Uh, okay, and over a period of time, I've been adding, adding dishes. I mean, this is a big Microsoft Excel sheet. With, oh, you have one ready? And I've given it to Soumya, and that that sheet gets updated every year. Uh. So if I go to Melbourne, okay, I know what is famous there. If I go to Cape Town, I know what to be added there, like that. over a period of time so it's easy i just have to pull out that excel sheet but how are you doing this because clearly you said you were okay with the uh, curd rice so do you google stuff i google stuff do you read the uh... i google stuff pinterest is the best place really pinterest is the best place who would have thought this is so fascinating tell me your pinterest. process what do you do then well, first i google up then i'll call my wife my wife will say no 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 you pinterest like idu par adu par she'll send a few links if you see one then they will suggest you so many others yes. and uh, the recipe is there and then i'll send the recipe to soumya or the chef they'll make exactly in I mean, most of the good chefs that they can just replicate it like that bas ye bolna ye hi tumhara ad yeah that's it so here <laughs> now delivering in 10 minutes so we every time so there's a there's a practice session there's a match or there is uh there is a team dinner or anything so me so i sit with uh, our strength and conditioning coach basu and Bhatti. we decide the menu yeah so we try to bring in little little things to say for example we have players from all over the world yeah so we keep a certain say a western dish or a few of western dishes and also we have some regional dishes yeah say for example local to the region and the place where at exactly yeah. say for example we sometimes we keep uh, rajasthani food yeah sometimes say food from tamil nadu or yeah. sometimes sometimes food from west bengal like wherever we traveling we traveling yeah. we try to keep that menu and most of the time it's a fusion menu yeah so you must have seen that's the reason the people uh, the players also enjoy you know our spread like faf was going mad over biryani uh, in the last uh, season of ipl because I think everywhere he went, for some reason, somebody was feeding him biryani. Exactly. He started having conversations about biryani at one point. Exactly. I'm really trying this year to venture out a lot of the food, especially. Yeah. Um, to try and just because I love food and I love trying new things, but I think we get so um, almost like in the 
bubble life of playing IPL. You just hotel game, hotel game, travel, hotel. So this year I've been trying to venture out a little bit more. Um, so I've been trying out a few more local things, eating experiences. Um, and the food, the variety in the food from city to city is incredible. Like I, I think we're very ignorant as overseas players when you come over to India and you go, oh, it's going to be butter chicken. <laughs> Every like, well, yeah. uh, chicken tikka masala. Tikka masala. Those are the two <laughs> things, you know, butter chicken or chicken tikka masala. Um, whereas now I've just really um, gone out. Um, the other day, I think, is it is it Ron? Is it right I'm saying? Yeah. La, Ron. Ron. La, yeah. Best dish I've had um, in my whole trip so far was amazing. Yeah. Um, so we had that with, I keep forgetting the name of this, but it's the chickpea roti. What is it called? What's a chickpea roti? Oh, you don't even know. That's a good. That's good. I know. You're talking about what? Kugus. Uh, no. no. That's Arabic, right? No, no, that, that's hummus. That's something different. I'm talking about the flatbread, like not non, but the chickpea one. Oh yeah, did you eat the chole kulcha? Mm. Not sure. That's not sure. It. See the sober in India. Asbira, yeah. I'll check with him. Well, one more important thing that I think we would be the only team. Yeah. Where certain amount of desserts are also allowed, which I think is not allowed in other teams. So really, yeah. So I, so it's it's allowed. I mean, that's a reason when we go to the different cities also. Yeah. Uh, in spite of the fact that they give us a menu, yeah, we try to change the menu according to the players' requests. Right. So that's how. We'll... Although the meal plan is prepared to the period of the IPL, the research behind it never stops throughout the year. Like for example, the ricotta. I saw that in uh, Cape Town first time, and everybody loved it. It's cottage cheese inside, and it's healthy. The snack option, ricotta, add ricotta. And healthy bail option I saw sometime in somewhere in Nagpur or somewhere. And it was looking healthy, and I saw the ingredients, it was perfectly fine, added that. So snack option, like that breakfast option, lunch option, dinner option. So I have a bag of things to... So do the players actually come and do they notice these things? Because I'll, t I'll tell you why I'm asking you this, right? At, even at home, when there's something cooked which is so delicious or something that's so nutritional, sometimes we tend to kind of oversee it because we know it's taken for granted, right? The person who's putting it on the plate, we usually like, yeah, yeah, this person knows what he's doing. But do they come and appreciate it? A lot of times. They lot do. A lot, lot of times. I take a lot of uh, pains in... For example, uh, Bangalore, we go... And then they, you say that, tell the chef, I need that proper Bangalore sambar. And if you have that aroma and you mix it with some local uh, famous dish or something, yeah. there'll be a couple of followers who hey, they'll feel at home. So likewise, if you go to Punjab, yeah. uh, Chole, yeah. you give them Chole in that uh, lunch, they know it's there. Like for example, Chahal, he'll say, sir, whatever happens, I need Rajma Chahal. Rajma Chahal, yeah. all of us know he loves So I have in my mind always, when I have a sort of a post-match meal, Rajma Chahal, even if it is one or two guys, I'll tell them, oh no, please add Rajma Chahal. No, not many people used it last time. No, no, two people use it for sure. So it is just a human connect, that's all. And uh, you can't, after 30 days, even if you live in 10 star hotels, you want to go back home and have your home food. Yeah. So you need to keep having varieties for them and you can't go very strict on that. You need to see the spread. Yeah. And that if they want to choose healthy and unhealthy options on a given day, I'm okay with that. Because for me, the most fascinating story I know of you is uh, you trying to get an Italian chef to make accurate doses. See, I don't want to steal your thunder. You surely say that story. It's a very funny story. That was in the Dubai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did he actually succeed? <laughs> <laughs> I, all I know is I was stealing, I think, Virat's body powder. He carries his own body powder for some, the, the, the gunpowder, right? So I was stealing his. At one point, I stole and then I think everybody was stealing it and eating it. And even he was happy about everybody enjoying it. But you have to tell us the story of the idlis and doses and what happened and how you took it, how you took matters into your own hands. So oh, for a week, they tried giving it and a uh, lot of uh, boys from the southern part of the country and they wanted idli dose after. 10 days they want one soul food. <laughs> I was wondering what to do this. So I put a sort of a con call with my wife. She literally came on the con call and told him what to do. The Italian chef. And he, he got it right after a week. <laughs> oh, he did? Okay, good. So it worked then. So it's fascinating. So your life is not just the gym. It's also the kitchen sometimes. I mean, I don't call myself a nutritionist anytime. But yeah. my favorite uh, sort of... Uh, Research material is food and nutrition and performance nutrition. Do you cook? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. 
Uh, in fact, uh, thought about what, it. I think by now you should. I tried it during COVID. I think uh, horrible failure in that. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Okay. But, uh, I mean, I I know for a fact that people love food. And uh, imagine being an athlete. You're on the road three hundred days. Yeah. You can't tell them. Oh, eleven o'clock. You have to lay in with honey. At twelve thirty, you have one egg. One forty-five, you have only chicken breast. It's not possible. Humanly, yeah. it's not possible. All yeah. thirty days of your life in a month. So I was in fact thinking two months. That these are very long stays. How do you decide the food for two whole months? I think what has happened is uh, a paradigm shift which has happened over the years is athletes in general are very aware what they consume. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, it is their performance and it is their, what to say, their reputation at stake. Yeah. And I think overall uh, they have become like Olympic athletes, cricketers. It is not like what it used to be ten or fifteen years back. They are yeah. definitely eating lot sensible, and most of them know exactly what it is. I don't think uh, it is a task for me to convince anybody to eat the right type of food anymore. All you have to just tell them if it is good for you, they'll just consume it. बस ये बोलना है, ये ही तुम्हारा है? या, that's it. सही है यार. Now delivering in ten minutes. While the taste buds of our superstars are looked after in the meal plan, every now and then they get to enjoy the rich culinary brilliance of India with a variety of local flavors on offer wherever they go. They all have their favorites. You've obviously eaten uh, dosa, right? Dosa, what's that? Like a dosa. Yeah, 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 you have right. Yeah. You've been in Chennai, yeah. and now you've been in Bangalore as well. Yeah. So here's the million-dollar question that I want to ask you, and you like there's a lot of million-dollar question compared. This one is a million dollar. CSK versus us. No, no, no. Tiny versus where? No, 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 no. This one's a this one's the real deal breaker, right? Okay. You've had the sambar in yeah. Chennai, and you've had the sambar in Bangalore. Honest opinion, which sambar is better? This is a big debate. I would say the coffee is better in Bangalore. <laughs> the politician in me. Eh? Oh well done. I prefer it just the sambar only because it's slightly more spicy. The the Bangalore one is slightly on the sweeter side. So is jaggery an essential or no in sambar? No. <laughs> okay. Is there something in Bangalore that you've eaten that you'd recommend to the world? I had this uh, dosa with lemon rice inside. I think that's a very uh, special dish. I, I don't know if it's a, it exists somewhere. It's right next to a hotel where we're staying, just two minutes away. Forgot the name of the place, but yeah, it was very good. There's an entire set of camera people from Bangalore who's all who are all watching. Umesh Dosa Point. Oh, Umesh Dosa Point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I've been pretty safe here. I've tried a lot of the restaurants that we've sort of had at different yeah. hotels. So I've I've been pretty safe. I've um, eaten a lot of Chinese food over here. Like <laughs> I feel like we've had it a lot of Chinese. I am so happy you said that because I think Indian Chinese is a dish as is a. Cuisine by itself. Yeah, no, so, they they do it so well over here, and I, I reckon I've had a thousand dumplings since I've been here. So it's um it's it's been nice to um I suppose be spoiled for choices with food over here. While everyone is busy finding their favorite meal on the menu, there is one lucky local boy who gets to eat food cooked at his home for half the tournament, and he can't stop rubbing it in others' faces. I've not had a meal in the hotel. If you ask me in Bangalore. I've really not had a meal in the hotel, so it's obvious. If if you're in Bangalore, you you would really love to have uh, home food because I'm from here. So whatever my mom is uh, probably prepared, I'm just gonna eat that no matter what. For an athlete, nutrition plays a strong role in keeping the fitness levels in check. But there are certain parameters and processes through which this is evaluated from time to time. DEXA scan is one such process. So. When the DEXA scan came about, I'm assuming you were one of the first people to know about it, yeah. and then pass it on to the players. Tell us about that journey. I started this sometime in 2009. Okay, 2008-9. Time it was unheard of. So I I don't know a lot of people going against me in this. Why DEXA scan? It'll do a simple skin fold, BMI is there. I said skin fold and BMI is like watching old black and white films. Yeah. We can't live in a time warp. We need to move in the time. We need objective measures. 
when i do a skin fold there is no intra reliability or inter reliability and what is the point uh, doing bmi when there is no measure on your muscle mass these are all actual science facts and uh, when you have a tool to measure it why not use it and i started using it with uh, great effect in my gym and then slowly i started using it on all the players who is the first player to adopt it uh, we started it a long time back with tennis players in 2008 okay and the time it was still in the nascent stage so i was also doing i, I think i have a record i've done more than 10000 dexa scans wow and I have clear clear understanding of it and very simple if your muscle mass goes up conversely your fat mass will also go down it is inversely proportional and uh, likewise if it is the other way around you are doing something wrong in life it can be a, a nutritional issue it can be a physical issue it can be a mental leak also so dexa scan i think is gold standard one number two whether you are an athlete or not an athlete doesn't really matter the first thing you need to do as a person living in this earth is every year do a dexa scan to see where you stand in life I mean, let's say that you have 25% age fat and about 40 kg or 50 kg of muscle you same time next year you do that and it is 28% fat and you know muscle mass has come down yeah tell me something wrong yeah it tells you immediately you need to take a time out and reassess and set a new goal for yourself it is as simple as that good way to end it thank you sir lovely Super. well done we see players put their bodies on the line on the cricket field batters stay put for hours in the sun without breaking a sweat bowlers are ready for long spells for their team's cause let me tell you none of that comes easy there is no margin for error in modern day cricket and it takes excruciating pain in the gym and a strong will power to achieve that this is behind the scenes of the IPL and i'll see you again with another episode you're watching big basket now presents the rcb podcast